Bootsy big box. Sick okay. big box opening. All right. <laughs> so guys, that's our sick riff. Um opening for our, for for our podcast. Um, oh my gosh, I hate you so much. <laughs> um hey guys, what's up? What's Welcome up? back. Hey um to we actually have a name now. It's called Lagged Out. We so always had a name. Guys, we did. We just didn't want to spoil it with you guys because we didn't really actually know what our name was until we actually yes, we finished did. our first video. What are you talking Joe about? told me not to say it. We totally knew what it was. What are you talking about? Yeah, that's true. You guys were just lagging out, so that's probably yeah. why I didn't hear it. But, yeah. you know. But, um, yeah, so that's actually the first topic I want to talk about here in a second. But <laughs> one thing is, yeah, so our name is Lagged Out. Thank you guys for coming back for the second episode. We got yep. some good responses from this uh i think people really liked it i have some friends that really really liked the content and um, they were content with the content exactly they were content they thought it was funny we had good banter one friend said he expected to listen for five minutes and he listened (laughs) for an hour Um, and then shout out to luke hypowamak for listening (laughs) um and the other news is this will also hopefully this episode will be available on iTunes this time. Um, so, yeah, um, we could we put the first one on too. Yeah, yeah, we're we're currently trying to put the first one on for you guys because I know figure that out. Right, like it's actually in submission right now. That sounds weird. It's a, uh, it's in for approval now, but I know it's probably better for some of you guys to be able to download it so you don't have to use like data and everything yeah so but yeah joe you have any in opening thoughts um i actually wanted to go ahead and just start right off the bat with the metacritic reviews just to you know warm <laughs> oh, up gosh. um the uh, okay so you want to start off with the okay yeah, I'm, so I, I, yeah. I got my three for you so okay well if yeah we can go and start off with that then yeah all right so are you ready i am ready okay i'm gonna write these down that like i actually <laughs> that my names I come up with because I'm probably gonna get none of these right yeah all right so um and again if you guys have any um games on Metacritic that you want us to I guess use for this little mini game that we play uh feel free to drop them in the comments just drop like the um the description of it in the comments without you know the actual name in it and yeah um all right so the first one has a Metacritic score of 91 a user Shoot. a user score of 8.7 and the summary is blank is the definitive retail enhanced version of the original blank digital release presented in a pristine collectible physical release okay wait what's the <laughs> what's the platform though you forgot that oh yeah it's bad. the genre is action platformer 2D sorry oh no i mean like what like xbox pc um yes <laughs> Wait, so it's action it, it's, platformer? It's, on, it's um, PC, PS4, Xbox, and Switch. Okay. So action platformer. 2D. 2D. And can you can you do the description again? Yeah. Blank is the definitive retail enhanced version of the original Blank's digital release, presented in a pristine collectible physical release. What? <laughs> oh, my gosh. If, um, I, if I give you the developer, you'll get it for sure. I feel like... Is it Magic the Gathering? No. That's it is it. rated E for everyone. Oh, yeah. Magic's rated M for mom. <laughs> um, okay. So say the description one more time, and then I'll think of, <laughs> I'll name a guess. This is like, I feel like I should know this. Blank is the definitive retail enhanced version of the original Blank's digital release presented in a pristine collectible physical release. That doesn't really say much about the game itself. Yeah, it almost sounds like this is a collectible item. Let me see if I can find, like, oh, I see what this is. Okay, all right, hold on. That was a bad one. Sorry. So I I found out why. This one sucks. (laughs) So this is a a re-release on the Switch of a game that was originally released on PC, PS4, and Xbox One. That's why. Ah, Okay, Okay, um, so let me just look it up the normal one. Okay, I, don't I was like, wait, that makes like no sense. I was like, oh, goodness. Let's, do this one. Let's see. If it I'm probably going to not get any of these right, by the way, because I suck at this game. Here we go. This is, this. Oh, okay, there we go. This is, all right. So, the same scores and all that stuff. Action, platformer 2D. Um, actually, the meta score is 86, not 91. Um, 
Blank brings fans back to, into the 2D world of platform games with nostalgic pixel style art and core classic gameplay play by reimagining iconic zones and acts from Blank. So go ahead. Hmm. Okay, so I think I have more of an idea. Uh-huh. How many guesses do I get? I don't know. Just like, one? I guess like two or three. I don't know. <sighs> okay, so I'll, I'll say I get two guesses. Okay. So I'm going to say either Super Mario Brothers no, or Donkey Kong. Nope. <laughs> Dang it. What is it? It's Sonic Mania. <laughs> Oh my god. Sonic gosh. the Hedgehog. Dang it. 0 for 1. <laughs> yep. I'm terrible at this. All right. Gosh. Next up. So this one's probably going to throw you off a bit. You probably oh you probably won't even know what this one is to be honest, but it's okay. I can't wait. I have um, to make a name for it. <laughs> so this was on the 3DS. It has a metacritic score of 70 and a user score of 7.6. Rip. The genre is adventure 3D third person. And the summary goes as Tim Goodman, you will partner with self-proclaimed proclaimed great detective blank to solve strange occurrences all over Rhyme City. Together, you must investigate, take notes, and meet up with other blank to unravel the city's greatest mysteries. It's obviously like a detective game. Yeah. I was going to say Carmen San Diego, <laughs> but it's not that. Do you remember that game? Yeah, I, I, my sister played it. I played it. Um, God, I loved that game. Else. I'm not a, I'm not very proud that I played that game. <laughs> Um, gosh. So I think so. I'm gonna have to make up a name because I actually have no idea what this is. Okay. Like, I'm gonna I feel like some people there. do because of like the descriptions in like the the rhyme city or whatever. Mm-hmm. But like, I have no idea what that is. So I'm not gonna even <laughs> act like I know what that is. All right. So, um, I'm gonna say the Great Escape of the Detectives of Rhyme City. No. Okay, what's the name? I gotta write that down though. The Great Escape of the Detectives of Rhyme City. Okay, what's the game? Because right. I have no idea. Ready? Yeah. Detective Pikachu. Oh my. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Wait, Rhyme City? Yeah, it's not spelled like rhyme, it's R Y M E. Wow, you would pick that. Like yep. I, I should have known it was gonna be like a Pokemon game. Yep. Yeah. And what's cool is Pikachu actually talks in the game. Oh my! What does he sound like? Is um, it like a girl. So in the Japanese dub, he's he's got like a really deep voice, and then yeah. in this one, um, it's not as deep, but he's used. He's still like a man's voice. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Last one. Starting off the podcast strong, huh, Adam? <laughs> I know. Right? I'm doing terrible. All right. This one is, uh, let's see. Hold on. Let me make sure, because this is a re-release on the Switch. God, you picked all Switch games. I know no, I know, like, no, 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 no. Switch games. The, so this one came out on PC originally, but okay. for whatever reason, the first one that came up on the Critic is the Switch release. Okay. Um, Let me just make sure. Because that description looks good enough, but it might not. Oh, that's the only one. Okay. All right. So this is on PC, PlayStation, uh, and PlayStation Vita, uh, and the Switch. <laughs> and the Switch. Who plays PlayStation Vita? Let's be honest here. Come on. Metacritic score, 92. User score, 8.2. Good lord. The genre is role-playing Japanese style. <laughs> God. And I would also say it's RPG, but they don't have that on here. But it is. Okay. It's rated E10 and up. So, sorry, nine-year-olds and all those other guys. Um, the summary goes, Welcome to Blank. In this RPG, you control a human who falls underground into the world of monsters. Now you must find your way out or stay trapped forever. Gosh. <sighs> I can give you some, some of the features. As yeah, give me some of the features. Okay. Give me some of the features. Right. Killing- I can't go 0 for 3. <laughs> Killing is unnecessary. Negotiate out of danger using the unique battle system. Time your attacks for extra damage, then dodge enemy attacks in a style reminiscent of top-down shooters. What? Oh my gosh, there's so many different games. Like, what? I didn't even know there's like a plethora of these Japanese <laughs> top-down shooter style. This was actually a really big game when it came out. I know, I feel and like I should on know this. PC first. Give me the developer. Toby Fox. 
no idea who that is. <laughs> gosh. Oh my gosh. Um, underground fighting monsters. Underground fighting monsters. Um, I almost said Dig Dug Terraria. Which those have I, there's no way that's it. No, that's um, two different game names that you put together. I no, I know. I'm saying like it's. I was gonna guess one of those. Um, let's see. So underground, not little big planet. Uh, um, top down. Uh, it's for the it's for the 3ds though. It's for PC, PlayStation 4, Vita, and Switch. Oh, I forgot about Vita. Um, <laughs> that gives it away right there. Yeah, it does. Um, good lord, it's obviously. I feel like it's. It's obviously like an Asian game, right? Not really, no. Because it's on like it's on like Switch and PlayStation, so I feel like it's. It's um, it, the style of it is the same as like Earthbound. Okay. Which is like the oh. you know NES games like the nest from smash bros not like the nes yeah 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 yeah. oh my gosh i don't freaking know (laughs) i'm terrible at this uh just make up make up something yeah make up something um okay we're gonna go dig dugs no i'm just kidding um (sighs) monster hunter underground no not even close dang it i'm gonna put that down though all right what is it? Kind of a weak title. Uh, it is Undertale. Okay, I've heard of that. Yeah. Um, but never played it. I've never played a single one of these games. <laughs> um, did you play any of these games besides the Pokemon one? I never played the Pokemon one. Oh, did you play any of the other ones? No. <laughs> gosh. They were, okay. they were just like the first three that caught my attention when I went to Metacritic. Oh, my gosh. It's terrible. Yeah. Like, I did terrible. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay, though. Like, I'll get better at this game. Don't worry. No. That's pretty sad. I might have to end it with you trying to guess one, but I just... <laughs> All that's right. really sad. Let's go over the names, though, that we've come up with in the last two podcasts. So yours was Wondering Willie and His Magical Flute. Best game ever. Uh, best game ever. It's a great game. I came up with The Great Escape of the Detectives of Rhyme City. And then Monster Hunter Underground, Don't Sue Me, uh, whoever made that game. I don't know who that is. I can't remember. Who makes Monster Hunter again? Capcom. Capcom, that's right. Gosh, that's an old company. Good Lord. Wow. Well, guys, I apologize for sucking at um, our Metacritic guessing game. Uh, Like Joe said, if you guys have any Metacritic reviews, put them in the comments, and Joe will get them right, and I won't. So... Uh, Joe's apparently a lot better at this than I am. Or maybe I just picked more common games, but what do you think? Do you think I picked more common games, Joe? Mm, what were yours again? You had sh- I picked the Tomb Raider game, which mm-hmm. was pretty easy, I feel yeah. like. Um, you had the I Wandering the Willy music, or whatever. The, yeah, uh, it was like the wandering music game, which w- no one plays, but apparently it's... Yeah, oh, it was, it was uh, music. It was like... It was, I it was think like it was just called Wander. Yeah, it was like something like that. Um, what was the last one? What was the other one? It was uh, oh, it was Mega Man. Oh yeah. <coughs> and I think Excuse the only me. reason why you got that one is because of uh, like you said you saw a commercial for it. Yeah. Gosh, I hate you so yeah. much. So we kind of did the same, to be honest. True, because well, I didn't guess any right. You guessed two right. Right. Because I'm, I'm just so we didn't do the same actually. No, I, I, I meant I meant like I meant the games. Oh, okay. We both had yeah, like sure. a remaster, like sort of re-release thing, with Mega Man and Sonic. And then we had some uh, sort of obscure, like Nintendo title, <laughs> and then we had the third one, which was like yeah popular. Uh, yeah, no, that's God. That's just so bad. There, I'm so sad. Like, good lord. Um, okay, well, so got got a question for you. So mm-hmm. since guys, our name is lagged out. Um, I also put this down for any of the comment in the comment section. Uh, if you guys want to comment on the worst time that you guys lagged out on, in a video game or the most inconvenient time that you lagged out in a video game or the funniest moment that you lagged out in a video game, put it in the comments and we can read it. We can read it out loud on the podcast Okay. because I'd like to hear some of these stories because there's definitely been some interesting 
I think things where I've lagged out of games and I was going to ask you, Joe, what is like, do you remember any specific times that you lagged out or you saw someone lag out and it was funny um, or it was crazy? I mean, we lag out of destiny all the time because of our nat type, but that's changing on Monday. Um, True. Which I was going to ask you about. So that's good. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think there was one time in League of Legends where, like, we were doing really well. And um, I was, like, pretty much carrying the team because they were a bunch of, like, potatoes. Um, (laughs) What does that even mean? It means they don't know how to play the game, bro. Um, Oh, it's like a vegetable? Or, like... It means... No, not like a vegetable. (laughs) Okay, I'm just... I didn't know what that means. Like, I'm so confused (laughs) by this. It means, like, they're potatoes. Like, they can't play the game because, you know, like... Because they they're just they potatoes. Have, they have no they're arms being and legs. Yeah, they stick them. Stick, stick them in a stew. Sure, or, whatever yeah. you want, man. They're just potatoes. Lord of the Rings. Um, shout out to Sam. But um, like we were sort of getting crushed, but like I was like rallying the team because I'm, I'm like, all right, I just got to put them on my back. So I put them on my back. These <laughs> sack of potatoes, and then Gosh. we started coming back, and I was like, okay, we're doing really well, and it was getting close to the end of the game, and I think for whatever reason. The internet went out or my computer just like restarted or something by the time i got into the game well the whole time like i was just like oh my god we're gonna lose this we're gonna lose this we're gonna lose this um and it might have been like one of like my ranked matches too so like it was kind of important um but by the time i got back into the game the game was over and i checked my match history and we won so i was like okay okay potatoes you you know Yeah. So you technically carried, but then you lagged out, yeah. and then they carried you. The pretty, potato carrier. pretty much, yeah. And I think I actually like <laughs> disconnected in front of like their tower, so I was just kind of like standing there, <laughs> I think, for a bit. <laughs> oh my god! So I don't know if I died. I think I was, I think I was flawless too. I had like eleven kills, no deaths, and I think that was like the one death that I had that game too really this, yeah this was a couple years ago so i don't remember exactly but i think so yeah i don't really want to get into the to these i mean we can but the discussion of me playing league of legends because i am straight garbage for those, at league for of, those of you wondering i was playing fizz that game too oh, back, gosh, back, when, I, back when he was good yeah i i don't even know who that is it sounds like something in a soda but i mean um, it is i mean true it actually is wow but anyways like I just, I don't really, like, okay, so that's the one thing. So, okay, bring up two topics here. Because, okay. one, I don't, okay, let me just give my opinion on MOBAs. Bro, you need to like, collect your thoughts and organize and <laughs> start speaking words. I know, I know. I'm just so hype about this, though. Okay. So, first things first, I'm really bad at League of Legends. Yep. Okay, let's get that on the table. So I'm not one to be can confirm an expert on League of Legends because I'm trash. Like I'm literally the garbage can that you take out to the street. Can it's confirm. it's so bad. Like I don't know how to last hit. I I I can't physically do it. Like I'm an idiot. Apparently, at he's last a hitting. potato. I am a potato. I try using Ash. I can sometimes pop off with her ult and get lucky and spike someone with that thing, but. Honestly, I'm just so bad at League of Legends, and it used to frustrate me a lot, though, because I felt like the community was really toxic. Oh, yeah, they are. That's like every like, MOBA community, though. Yeah, I just – the thing that bothered me the most about League of Legends, though, was if I DC'd, right, mm-hmm. like, I would get, like, banned from, like, matches. And for me, yeah. it's like, okay, I know if, like, if someone – if, if we're playing Destiny and we lose a guy on our team and we're playing Gambit or whatever, we don't actually know if they disconnected. Like, we, we don't actually – we can't actually tell. Right. So well, – Neither can League of Legends. We, right. Or, true. No, exactly. So I know in League of – like, I know that people report in League of Legends because of that, and they want to bring that to Destiny as well. And so I kind of understand why they have that because there's no way of knowing that. Mm-hmm. But it is super frustrating. Like, if there was, like, a way that – that the companies could like somehow see like if it could register that your character actually DC'd or you actually like clicked the like leave game like button that or escaped work, out of your beer. No, I so why wouldn't I'm just wondering because instead of just quitting the game like in the game, you could just go turn off your router and be like, Oh, I disconnected. 
No, that's true. So. That's a good point. Yeah, so I just I wish there was some way though that they could tell because it was very frustrating when I used to get DC'd from League of Legends and I couldn't play. And then I just realized like how much I didn't like the game, so I was like, okay, I guess I shouldn't be playing. But it was just kind of frustrating. But I kind I get what they they why they do it and it makes sense. So that's the first thing. So let's get out of the way. I am not an expert at league. I'm really, really bad at it. But I don't I still and I know you like MOBAs, but I can see I can see the point of playing a MOBA more than I can a battle royale game. And I just I don't I was talking to someone today about the battle royale games and how like it definitely seems like it targets younger kids. Um they seem to get more addicted to the genre than older mm-hmm. people, I would say. But the blackout mode for Call of Duty looks looks really cool and I think I would be pretty good at it. But I just really like games that have progression systems and I feel like Fortnite and stuff, like they have the cosmetic stuff, but it's like not enough. Like I, I just don't see the appeal of doing it over and over again. I know it's free and everyone always says, Oh, it's free and I'm like, mm-hmm. I get that it's free. Like I'm not stupid. But just because it's free doesn't mean it's good. Right. Like I just I don't understand that. And so what I also I'm trying to say is with MOBAs, I feel similarly with it, but I have played like Smite, played Heroes of the Storm, and I really like the cosmetic stuff they add because like it gives you something to work towards kind of, and I know you can buy skins and everything. Well, but those I also like, have like a ranked ladder you can climb. No, yeah, so exactly. No, I don't think Fortnite really has something like that. I mean, there's probably like sort of rankings, like st- right. like stats or whatever, but not like an actual ladder. Like there's no ranked mode or anything. Right, no, you're right. So so that's I I see more appeal in the MOBAs, but I just I don't I just don't see the appeal with with battle royale modes. Like I and I don't I think you I don't think you do either cuz you don't really play any, but like I just they don't seem fun. Like I and I just don't get it. Like maybe it's just cuz I'm older and I'm not like a little wee little kid, you know what I mean? I'm not a ch- I'm not chilling anymore. Like but I don't know, what do you think? Like I know you really like MOBAs, but I'm not a huge fan of them. Um yeah, like I'm not I can kind of understand why people enjoy Fortnite. Um or just like battle royales in general. Like I like the concept of it, like one versus ninety nine, you know? Um and like, okay. I mean, even though like you don't technically beat all ninety nine other people, um, like you're still the one who comes right. out on top. Um So like it kind of gives you that sense. Um, and I can kind of see the appeal of Fortnite because it's like, oh, we like you build like your own base as you go. Like, that's kind of cool. Um, but they haven't really done anything different since it started. Like, it's the same thing. Like, it's still the same game. Like, you shoot, you build forts, and that's pretty much it. Like, they've added like little twists here and there each season. Like, they had like the crystals the one season and then like these portals the other season. But like they didn't really like change much about the core gameplay. So, right. I don't know. And like, even then, like the crystals and like the portals, they didn't do, they don't affect building forts or shooting. Um, the crystals just make you run and jump faster. And then the portals basically like spawn you up in the air. So you can like dive back down at a different area. So, right. And which, no, which you could already do with the jump pads right yeah the jump pads yeah i i just i don't know i don't i i get the whole thing but it's like if they added like an actual progression system where like you got like i don't know i guess you can't really do it with battle i guess just how the game mode is but what do you think about mobas i know you like mobas mobas are fun uh rip paragon um (laughs) that game was so fun Yo, and that came from Epic Games. Yeah, I know. And then freaking Fortnite exploded, and then that was the final nail in the coffin. Like, Paragon was pretty much just dying anyways, but, like, they were starting to, like, actually listen to the community or at least, like, take the feedback in, and I feel like they were going to use that and turn the game around. Because when it first launched, it was like, yeah, whatever. Um, and then, like, they actually did some updates to it, and it was really good. Um like I think they had like six hundred thousand players, like active players at one point. Yeah. And that was like what they peaked at. Um and then it just kinda like declined over the next year and a half, I guess. Um but yeah, I don't know. It just had so much potential and like it was 
very unique in not just the way it looked because like all the other movies are like really cartoony this one was like the unreal engine so like it looked realistic um and just looked freaking gorgeous too um it really did look like good, i would admit the uh even like the gameplay mechanics were different um and they had verticality to it too like smite yeah it's like third person like over the shoulder sort of thing uh but everything's like flat you can't go up you can't go down like there's no ramps or anything um like if you jump up you're going to land back at the same you know plane that you jumped right from. whereas paragon like you could jump off of a cliff down into like a crater or something you know um so it had a lot of things going for it it's just it never took off um league was fun but i got burned out of that for a while uh smite got kicked to the curb once paragon came out and also rip um what was that frick there was the the dc comics moba oh um oh, I know oh well, infinite oh crisis gosh. no no yeah, it was infinite it was... crisis no but there was another one it was uh it was the marvel one or no it was the dc versus it was marvel versus cap no that's not a moba <laughs> no, i hate you so much no what is the one that was like free with playstation injustice um, no it was yeah no, no, no! Like I, that's a game, yeah. Oh, you it, mean DC oh. Online? Yes, that's an that's MMORPG. <laughs> that's true. That's not a MOBA, folks. Yeah. Did yeah. not get the, the information. The DC from MOBA me. was fun too, but they they did the same thing Epic did, where like they, I think they were probably worse than Epic. The game was fun, but they weren't focusing on the fun parts of the game. They were trying to like, they had three maps basically. They have like your standard boring MOBA map, you know, like three right. lanes, five v five, whatever. They had this like sort of dominion map where it's just like a circle and you capture points, um, which league has too. It's whatever. But then they also had, a, they're like this own, this different map. It had two lanes and a massive jungle. So it would be like one person up top, two people down bottom, and then two junglers, which I don't think any other MOBA has anything like that, which is really cool. Um, and then, um there was also like a big objective in the middle you could play towards um and there were other like mini objectives you could fight for it was just really cool but they never let you play that um publicly you'd always have to do custom games with it and i think if they focused on that mode and not just the standard like three lane 5v5 mode um that it might have taken off but yeah yeah, I mean this this turned into more of like a tangent because you're like, what do you think about MOBAs? I'm just like, I love Paragon, man. You know, I love that DC MOBA. <laughs> I freaking love Paragon, bro. You know, I just like Paragon really hits my soul because it's got the name Paragon. No, I don't know. Paragon yeah, does I, mean like perfection though, so which you aren't, yeah. but wow, I am. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, I yeah, no, I have to agree. We can just talk about. I don't care about talking. I mean, we yeah, can talk about no, Paragon, yeah, but. That's fine. Paragon had some beautiful graphics, it and did. I, did you play? Did you end up playing on PC or did you just play on PS4? I, so I started on PS4 because I didn't have a PC at the time. Um, and then they then they switched it over, right? Like you could no, switch so, your so account. they launched it um, PC and PS4, and it was cross platform, cross progression. So um, which I think Fortnite is like that too. Um, yeah, because no, everything Rip everything is me. tied to your Epic account. So you know when I transitioned from PS4 to PC. I didn't get very far. I played Paragon for maybe like a couple weeks before I stopped and then restarted on PC. Um, but like yeah. all the progress that I did make in that week or two or whatever, um, I already had. So that was nice. Yeah. I rip destiny and rip destiny uh, ESO because they <laughs> don't, they don't do cross platform like account sharing. Yeah. I think if destiny did like let you transfer your, um, account to pc yeah i'd probably be playing on pc same and i think they're they might be because blizzard is going to be doing cross-platform account sharing for diablo 3 interesting which is actually going to be amazing because i put a lot of hours into ps4 on diablo 3 they just need to make so, diablo 4 <laughs> like i mean yeah why that's are they true still too. updating diablo 3 i mean people feel like freaking still play that game so much but Man. i'm actually really excited about that because that means that you can play monk dude <laughs> um probably, just let you guys know joe really <laughs> made a monk again. on diablo 3 and he freaking loved it that monk is um, awesome 
yeah, the monk was cool. But no, it's actually pretty cool because now I could technically just play it on PC. But I'm not really gonna play it right now. But I'm just saying. I mean, I will eventually. All right, let's let's not get too ahead of ourselves. But um, so yeah, I I think if Destiny did that, which they might eventually, but it's it's really Sony and Sony though was did the thing with Fortnite, so they might eventually do it. But it just depends, I guess. Yeah. If they want to, but um, it's yeah, not even gosh, like the, probably... the cross platform like play. It's just the like, account. I don't stuff. care yeah. about if I have to play against like Xbox people or not. Um, I just want to be able to like, transfer my account. Yeah, and I mean, I think they do it because of like the contract they have with Destiny because they get exclusive content first on PS4. Oh, yeah, uh, I'm pretty that. sure. Oh. So that's probably why. Maybe, um, yeah, that might have to do with it too, because like because I saw like yeah. a thing about the account um the account wide stuff like like or the um the the contract that they had and i'm thinking that's probably why sony can't break that yeah that might be um it. but let's see here because then it'd be like oh hey i'm on xbox even though i just transferred from ps4 look at this cool gun i have that you guys don't <laughs> yeah so it's so, something to do with that i think yeah that, um, that's a good point i didn't think about but that. yeah i but i don't know i i think maybe I definitely would play it on PC though if they did that, mm-hmm. but maybe for Destiny Three, I'll probably get it for PC um, if they, whenever that comes out. But because I think they have to make like another one, like you said, or they two more. they have they have to make two more. Activision contracted them for four games. Okay, so so yeah, so that's interesting. Um, so freaking Activision. <laughs> freaking Activision. Yeah. Uh, so side note, real quick. I never told you about my lagged out story, but I also have a. I also have another discussion uh, here. Well, a second, no one but cares about your story, so that's okay. I know. Well, it's about RuneScape, so no one really cares. About <laughs> yeah, it, but I no want to tell people this because <laughs> this is really funny, though. Do you hear, like do you hear that, Adam? It's people clicking away from the podcast. <laughs> oh my gosh, I hate you so much. But okay, I'm going to tell you guys this real quick. But in RuneScape, I know all of you that are listening have played this mm-hmm. game because it's one of the best games online and. One of the best Debatable. MMOs. I think it got a 99.9 on Metacritic. It got like Not a true. 9.9 user score. False. Um, <laughs> I hate you so much. <laughs> um, but yeah, so when you lag when you lag in RuneScape a lot of times, your character will like run forward, stop, and put his hands and legs really straight. And then it'll do it every like five seconds. And so you'll just like be like blooping. You're like blipping through the map. And I always used to think it was funny, and it was really super frustrating too. But it just looked like it looked like I was trying to fake someone out, kind of like I was like trying to like stop and start kind of thing. But yeah, I know it was really funny, and I'm glad you guys all laughed at that. Hilarious. So we can move on to the next topic. Thank but I just want gosh. you guys to know that. Go ahead and subscribe to uh, RuneScape, old school RuneScape guys. Get members, great idea. Nope. Go ahead and do it. Um, I made Joe an account many times. He doesn't know about all his accounts. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you have like six accounts I've made you. Cool. No, I'm just kidding. I remember when you made an account and I actually played it for you because you weren't playing. I was like, I need to get your wood cutting up, dude. What? But no. Yeah, that was like in like eighth grade. Remember, like There's we no made you way. one. I I remember I played it and I got up to wood cutting like 15 and I was like, all right, I'm bored. <laughs> you know, I think I was. You let me sign into your account though. I, I don't remember, but sure, why not? You were weak then, Joe. You were weak. Didn't you have, you something, gave didn't have something more important to talk about? That's true. Well, RuneScape is most important, no, it's but. Not. Uh, yeah okay so so here's the thing so about the the battle royale modes and stuff so i saw an article the other day it was a uh, friday yeah, it was friday i think um it said that it was talking about the black ops 4 blackout mode and it said that they he this whoever this was thought that this mode is going to kind of kill the battle royale genre like this will be the last good battle royale game because pretty much um what he was saying or she i don't know if it was a guy or a girl but um i think it was a guy but um he, he was saying that this game mode or this black ops so they he was saying PUBG is was already declining because of fortnite so that's one thing all the like lo, like smaller studio you know battle royale games like that kitchen one they came out with i yeah. think like and then, like, there's another one that was, like, really popular for a week. Mm-hmm. He said that since this is a AAA title that came out with a blackout, mo- like a, a right. Battle Royale mode, that this will probably just kill all the other smaller studios mm-hmm. game uh, games because it's just because it's popular and everyone knows about it. Yeah. But he thinks that 
the battle royale mode has been pretty much sucked dry there's like nothing else really anyone can do to it because like fortnite kind of stretched it and blackout mode is like there's a lot of people that like it more than fortnite like it doesn't have the building aspect but right. it's got the you know it's got the gun it's got great gameplay like great gunplay great vehicles um it's like better PUBG pretty much yeah. um PUBG's dead. like <laughs> yeah exactly like it, it's better than that and like so he pretty much what he was saying is like he doesn't see another company going into that because like there's no point to because now there's like a triple a studio that's made a battle royale game and it's really good and it's gonna be pretty competitive with fortnite i think mm -hmm. at least on twitch and he doesn't think anyone can like can can really tap into that anymore because he like you know hold on <laughs> okay I had to sneeze, so <laughs> I was like, what the heck? didn't want didn't want the viewers to uh, hear that. Uh -huh. But um, so he said that. So I'm kind of I have a question to ask you after this. But so what do you think about that? Do you think do you agree? Because I agree um, with that. Because I think that it really has been like I don't I really don't think that like you could really tap into it anymore. I can't think of anything else you could add to a battle royale game. Um, well, it's been number one on Twitch since it came out. So that's interesting. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's hard to say because, like, gamers are... A lot of gamers, like, just go with the trend. Um, True. Like, when the Raiden Forsaken came out, um, Destiny was, like, number one on Twitch for, like, that two-day period. And then it kind of, like, died back down. Um which is which I think is understandable. For yeah, because like, um, obviously new games come out. People and then watch. like who knows what like the next two Call of Duties are gonna do. Like you know, are we gonna have like we mentioned this in the last podcast? Like, is Infinity Ward gonna make Whiteout? And then like is Sledgehammer gonna make you know, freaking freaking yeah, Hammer out, Hammer time, Hammer time, Hammer time. yeah, Hammer time Royale. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, so <laughs> I don't know. It's it's hard to tell. Yeah, I mean, I just. I don't know because it's just like it's just such a it's such an interesting thing to me because i just can't i just don't see the like i said i don't see the appeal to it and it's just so popular but so the thing i was going to ask you though is what do you think is the next big genre a game or genre or innovation of a game that that will come out in your opinion like what do you, oh, i can't like, really answer that well i mean like I get that you're not going to know, right? But, like, is there is there any sort of, like, punch or any sort of thing that you, like... I get that you don't know the answer to this question, but I'm going to ask you the question anyways. Exactly, because <laughs> I want you to answer the question. I hate you. No, I I'm just kidding. I don't um, know, dude. You don't know? No, like, because, like, I think Battle Royale was pretty much created by PUBG. Um, and then, like, it really took off with Fortnite. Um... But, like, I don't know. MOBAs weren't really a thing until League of Legends. Like, it's based off of the the um, Warcraft 3 mod, but that re didn't really have, like, a, uh, I guess, a genre? Because it was technically just, like, a mod. Um, yeah. But, like, League basically, like, sort of made it what it is. That's a good point, actually. Um, I didn't think about that, actually. Yeah. That Warcraft 3 had that. Yeah, because they did. Mm -hmm. Remember Pimp My Peon? Yeah, that was a fun game. <laughs> that was so freaking... I was so bad at that. <laughs> so was I. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Like, we went yeah, we guess, went from MOBAs I, running the world to Battle Royales. Well, that's what I'm saying, right? So, like, I guess my question more is, like, what would you like to see, I guess? Like, it, I, I know it's, like, a broad question, but it's, like... So, since like okay, so obviously like VR is like really yeah. I was I was just now. about to say I think if a good enough VR game came out, that could probably take over. Right. I mean, it's just like not everyone okay. has VR. Like it wouldn't. It, depending on the game, um, it might not be like as popular as like Fortnite or something, just because most people don't have VR. Um, like, there's been, like, what, 60 million PlayStation 4s sold or something since it came out. But there's only been, like, oh, really? I, think, I think it's, like, 6 million PSVRs sold. So, like, it's sort of like a 1 to 10 ratio. Um, yeah, I think 
if the right game in VR and it was like actually really good came out, uh, that could probably take over. Cause even if it was like just like another like <clears throat> battle royale or MOBA or freaking Tetris or whatever. Right. So yeah, that's what I'm kind of wondering. I'm wondering if like VR is like the next thing, like because you know how like I feel like the human race like gets really bored with stuff really easily. Like mm-hmm. our attention spans are like really short. Yeah, and I think that's why battle royale is so popular because it's not like like people say like MMOs are dying. They kind of say like rocks dying too, but no, rocks not dying. Uh, <laughs> you know, people say ghosts. rocks dead. <laughs> yeah, people say that, but like there's a lot of really good rock music, right? Yeah. But like. I think people, it's like similar to people saying MMOs are dying because MMOs take so much time investment. And I think mm-hmm. that a lot of people now, they don't have the attention span to play a long invested game. So like these like MOBAs where it's like short matches, you know, battle royale thing, which is, which is like short matches. You yeah. can die in like five seconds and it's over, yeah. but like obviously that's not ideal where you just suck. Right. But, um, Potato. Like that's like Joe, but me, I'm kind of like top ten. Whoa, every whoa, time, no, no, but... no, 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 no. Did we wait? Did we did win? Didn't we one time? What's this we stuff? I won. I mean, um, I know I died like a little bit in. I don't like... think I ever won a multiplayer game, but I won my second. I did ever, with Sean and then. I won my second ever solo game in Fortnite, and that's when I retired. <laughs> oh my god! And I got like you gotta two start... kills. <laughs> you gotta retire when you're. Uh, you gotta retire when you're on top, right? I guess. Yeah. You got two kills. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I, yeah, I literally I just like Sean. hid. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's what me and Sean did too. But, and like Simon, but yeah, like everything, like everyone has such a short attention span now that it's like, they don't want to put the time. I feel like some, most people don't want to put the time into like MMOs because like it takes time obviously. But I mean, I love grindy games and there's a lot of people that still do. But so I think the next like big thing is going to probably be like something with like a short, like game game time if that makes sense like a yeah. short kind of activity or like vr because vr might be like the next thing too because like i mean it would be pretty cool to like be in your like be in the like so say if they got it to where it was so advanced to where like you know those movies they have where it's, it's kind of like freaky but you're like in a different world yeah and you like like think about the Yu Gi Oh like season three where like yep. you're you're in freaking noah's world if anyone's seen that <laughs> um hopefully they have but like like where you're like in a, your own world kind of thing and you just get to do whatever like you get to play like shoot guns like you know what i mean mm-hmm. like almost like like just a virtual world so i'm kind of curious i mean i don't think we're there yet with that obviously um but i do think the next thing is going to be like it's got to have to be like something that's very short term game type based i guess if that makes any sense at all but does that make any sense yeah um i think if vr eventually gets to the point where like it's more than just you standing in the same spot with a headset and like two controllers in your hands like if it could be more advanced to like see okay like he's moving or like if they even make it to where like um sort of like ready player one where they have like the suits that like if someone like pats you on the back like the suit like sends that sort of like same sensation to that area on your back. So like you would feel it. Oh gosh. So I think that is probably when like, you know, the world's just, the world ends. (laughs) (laughs) The world just ends when that happens. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I think we're kind of doomed if that happens. I don't know. That'd be really cool though. Um, Or even just like changing the controllers to where like, they're not just like sticks you hold, but like they're like, gloves you put on you they're know? just like they're like they're like flesh you just like hold someone's no, hand no i'm just kidding no. that'd um, be terrible but like if they change them from just like sticks to like gloves that you wear so that way like you're not just like oh let me pick this up press the a button you know like you'd actually have to like grab it with your glove you know like i think that would be cool right no that is interesting um so, yeah i don't know i just I kind of want to try to like figure out if I can ever predict it because it's like, I, I don't know. I just like kind of thinking about that stuff in a he- ahead. Cause it's like, if you can think of a, if you can think of an innovative thing, I mean, you can freaking make a game platform or like a game type, just blow up. Like, I don't know. I'm, it's just I mean, like, obviously some games have battle royale modes already in them, like way back when, but like they made it like popular or something. You know what I mean? Like they made it different. I mean, I guess, technically you could say mag, 
was the first battle royale. Do you remember that yeah. game? Yeah. Oh my god. It was like hundred. It May. was like one hundred twenty six players a match. So it was like it was terribly it, made. It was like, but yes. yeah, it was like sixty four v sixty four or something like that. God, um, shout out to Mag. <laughs> Anyone who's played Mag, just like leave a leave a comment. Oh my gosh, I forgot yeah. about that. So I think that I mean it's sixty four v sixty four, but like it's sort of the same thing because it's like. It's pretty big. Hundred yeah. people, big map, um, destructible terrain, like buildings and stuff. Um, and I, I mean, even like nowadays, like Fortnite has like fifty v fifty modes and stuff like that. So interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Just something I randomly remembered. <laughs> that's interesting. Uh, did that? I I totally forgot about that game. That is amazing uh i kind of <laughs> want to play it now why like, it there's probably no one this was so cool it was like so cool like the concept yeah was the so concept cool. was cool because it was like early ps3 days or something like that so like it was like oh this is what the hardware can do i think that's what it basically was it was just like a uh, proof of concept of like what the hardware can do it, I yeah, think it was that's why it wasn't good. that good yeah it was just like look at what like, it like can squawk. do don't do it like, this way but this is what it can do like, let's be honest, like, that was a game that was supposed to be based off, like, you listen to your squad member, right, and your squad your squad leader, and let's be honest, all the games that try to do that don't usually work now. There are, like, obviously there's, like, professional gaming where, like, people listen, yeah. but, like, the games, like, the games, like, Rainbow Six, uh, Siege, yeah, I think the games, really like, well. yeah, that does it well, um, there's, like, the Tom Clancy games do it decently, um, like, the Ghost Recon games, mm-hmm. but... For the most part, if you have like a squad leader, you're not gonna freaking listen. To it. You're gonna go <laughs> off and teabag someone in the corner. Like, let's be honest here. Like, I'm. You're not gonna be like. You're not. Well, Stone Mountain's hilarious. I feel like, yeah. but like Stone Mountain, like used to do that stuff or like the bat, like Yolo in the battlefield right, or whatever. Right, where like right. he would just give people like army orders. He's like, I need a sit rep. Like he would just like do all this stuff. But like no one ever listened. So it's like why it's like. They tried to make that because I remember that was like one of the selling points. It was like you're in a squad and you like, you tell your team of twenty six p- different human beings to like go do something. It's like yeah, you're definitely gonna they're definitely gonna listen to you. Mm-hmm. That's like no, like I don't know. But it was like a cool concept that also reminds me of Resistance. Do you remember playing Resistance? I did not I like those game. games at all. They were pretty I scary. I sucked but... at the shooting. Oh, I was good. I was pretty good. I do remember. I think you came over and played it one time in my house. Yeah. Or maybe that was Brennan. I don't remember. But it was it was fun, though. Like, I think it was pretty fun. But I liked the story, actually, a lot in it. But that's just me. Mm-hmm. But um, so, question. What yeah, is it. your favorite VR game that you've played, though? Um, So, I've only played a few. And I have a bunch more. I just don't have anywhere to play the vr here in this house (laughs) um which sucks um one of them i got that i haven't played yet is um frick what's it called it's called like hold on i gotta google it (laughs) i think it's called like (laughs) all i can think of is that video that far point yeah far (laughs) point um which so what's that so it's a shooter it's like a first person shooter and i actually got like the vr like gun to make it feel more realistic and stuff. Um, Interesting. I think it's like on rails too. I don't think you actually move. Maybe you do move. I don't know. But that seems like fun. Um, and then there's Batman VR, which was kind of cool. I wish it was longer, but it's like 30 minutes um, of like wait. Of like is it like story. the is it like Arkham City or is it, it like a different? It's the kind of... it's like the Arkhamverse, but it's like <laughs> it's sort of like a what if story, and it's only like 30 minutes long. Um, <laughs> Like, if you know what you're doing, it's 30 minutes long. It took me, like, two hours to beat it the first time. Um, I have Super Hot VR, which seems like it'll be a lot of fun. Um, Fruit Ninja VR, which I think that'll be fun, too. Wow. Um, that's, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And then I want to get Beat Saber when that comes out on PlayStation. Beat Saber? Yeah, I showed you Beat so it's Saber. it's like before. Guitar Hero? Oh, yeah, it's like Guitar Hero, Yeah, it's like Hero, the Guitar right? Hero, but with lightsabers. And, like, you have to slash oh the blocks God. the right way um, with the right color. Um but yeah, that's that's coming out on PlayStation at some point, so I'm gonna get that. That's gonna be fun as crap. Uh, and none of that actually answered your question of which one's my favorite. Um, so I get yeah, you're really so good. So I at that. guess out of the ones that I have played, 
I would probably say the Batman VR because that's like the only VR game I've played. I've played demos, which were fun, but I don't. We played that shark game. Remember that when you first got VR? The shark demo? Were... Yeah. Yeah. That was, oh, that's that was true. so was funny. One, yeah. That was, that's on the demo disc that it comes with or whatever. <sighs> Did you record I, that? I Yeah, I recorded it. Uh, so I got it for Christmas a while ago. And then <laughs> I I was I freaked out a bit. I was like, oh, frick. And then we put <laughs> my mom into the VR. And <laughs> we had her. So one of her, like, um, I guess, bucket list items is to go diving, like, in a cage with sharks. So I was like, here you go, mom. You can live out your dream. <laughs> and she was freaking out. It was so That's funny. That's amazing. Yeah. And I recorded it. It's on my Facebook somewhere. So. All right, guys. Go follow Joe on Facebook. Yeah, he needs followers. Um. But yeah, that's that's okay. So you would say probably Batman. Then yeah, probably the Batman favorite. one was cool because like you could actually like throw batarangs and stuff. So interesting. Okay, well, so I heard Skyrim or I heard Fallout VR was really cool. Yeah, uh, Sean, Trevor Sean's apparently played it. it. Yeah, Trevor played it, and he said that he got like motion sickness because it was like yeah. kind of interesting when you like run around and stuff, but. I played Sean's Oculus Rift mm-hmm. at at his house, and so this isn't going to help the conversation at all because I don't actually remember the names of these games, right. but I can describe them. So my two favorite games were this one game where you were in a coliseum, and it was like these really oddly shaped, like, ogre-looking men, and you <laughs> okay. you went in and you picked up these, like, chain, uh, these, these weapons that were, like, ball and chain, and you actually had to bend down to pick them up. It was really cool. Mm-hmm. And you could swing them. And they just run at you with, like, all these weapons. <laughs> and you have to beat them up. And there's just, like, there's, like, waves of them. And you could, like, swing. Like, I remember watching Sean. He was, like, swinging his, like, stick so much. And it just, like, he just smashed <laughs> it. And, like, people were, like, getting really close to the TV. And I was hitting the TV. Yeah. you just, like, like, Sean was, like, beating this dude, like, <laughs> on the ground. Like, it was, like, ridiculous. Like, it was kind of crazy. But that was fun. And then the other one was, like, this ninja game where – you jump no (laughs) you like parkour off walls and stuff and you shoot bow and arrows and like the these like these like samurais are like chasing you and i think you knew the name of it when i told about told you about this before but Mm -hmm. the guys the ninja guys are like red the samurais are like red and they like they like blow up into like particles kind of um and you is it like echo maybe or is it Sirento. It was like red something. I remember you saying like red something, or like something red. Well, I googled Oculus Rift Ninja game, and the first two that came up are Lone Echo and Sirento. It might have been Sirento. I don't know. It was super fun it's about though. Cyber like ninjas. You, that that was probably what it was because you literally could like you jumped in the air and you had like slow motion and it was it made you feel so cool like hmm. I actually felt like I was in the game and I was like super that excited does sound about awesome. it. Yeah, Joe, you would have liked this game. Like I feel like like you could literally like run up a wall and turn around in slow motion and shoot someone with like a bow. It was like it was really cool because you teleported too. Yeah, like so you could teleport to spots. And that's how you move. It was like really cool. You know, it would be a cool game to play in VR. What? Do you remember um, Chivalry Medieval Warfare? Yep. That would be freaking fun, dude. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> that you're game like, was so much fun. You're like, heave, volley. <laughs> and you're just like freaking like someone's like shooting arrows. Oh my gosh. If that was like multiplayer, you're like, yeah. oh, that would be so fun. Right? And then did like, you like, were you, did you play that a lot? Yeah, I did. I played it. I, I don't know if I was any good at it. Um, Sean was trash. <laughs> I think a lot. Rip of Sean. So hopefully Sean, you don't get to this point in the podcast. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, that game was fun though. Um, I think I usually went with like a mace as my primary weapon. Okay. Because you could you could choose like mace. There was like three different. There was like three or four different weapons, and then three or four like size weapons. So there was like a small sword, a medium sword, and like a large sword or whatever. And same with like mace and bow and arrow and whatever else there was. Um, right. I think spear was the other one. Yeah. Like pole arm. Um, so it's like, Oh, if you have like a small mace or whatever, you can use a shield on your other hand. But if you have like a large one, then you can't cause it's two handed. So that was, I've always thought that was cool, but that game was freaking fun. People did not know how to play objectives in that game. Like just like they don't know how to play it in any other game. 
but it was fun and i think that hashtag control I think, on destiny I think that as a vr game would be really cool like just seeing like this army of like screaming guys running at you as like you <laughs> flail your mace around i think that would be hilarious it's just like a bunch of nerds like running at you just like <laughs> yeah flailing. or like or even like seeing like the trebuchet like fire like a massive rock and you're just like staring at it in the sky as it like comes down and falls on your freaking body and crushes you joe i'll that save would be cool. you and i like i like take one for the team and then i like crush my like clavicle or something and you're like you just like leave me on the battlefield because you would no, i'm just kidding probably would Would you leave me on the battlefield joe of chivalry of chivalry uh like if it was real life <laughs> uh no if we were playing vr and we were trying to rank up and i got I saved you, and I got absolutely like my body got collapsed by like a huge rock from a catapult. No, you're dead. Would you save me? <laughs> you're dead. Oh come on, man! Bro, it's a huge rock. I'm not Hercules. I can't just like. You could probably get a triumph though. No. <laughs> oh my Let god. Let me just stop what I'm doing in the middle of a war. Get like a pulley system going, and like lift the rock off your flattened body. Sounds like a great idea. Yeah, no. If anything, I would just like put you out of your misery so you can respawn. Yeah, you'd probably. Sh- <laughs> Oh my gosh. You probably just shoot me in the head with like an arrow or something. Yeah, you know. Or I'll take one of those little oil canisters that they had and just throw it at you, light you on fire. Viking funeral. Wow, way to make me suffer. Just put like I'm gonna put you out of your misery, so I'm gonna light you on fire. Like I'm literally just gonna light you on fire. That seems like a great way to that put someone game out of their so misery. That's so much fun though, because like you... I never played it. Yes, you have. There's no way you didn't play it. No, I played it like for five minutes at Sean's oh. house. That's the only time I've ever played it. It was fun because like it was very gory. So like you would like take people's heads off or like their limbs or whatever. If like you threw like one of those like oil pots at someone um, and they caught on fire, you would actually like hear them screaming like, ah! <laughs> um, <laughs> oh my God. It was amazing. I think it died out really quickly though um, in a few months. But yeah, I mean, I fun. see it on Steam, and I mean, it's obviously like people still play some, but yeah, that game's pretty old. I mean, it came out like when Sean mm-hmm. and I, I think we were like in college, no, it was high like school. high school, yeah, yeah. I remember Sean was like playing it a bunch, and then they made like a game for Honor, which is kind of similar, um, sort of, it was sort of similar, for Honor, sort of similar, in, but it's in the sense you know, that it's not modern warfare, <laughs> it's medieval, right, right, <laughs> or. Which is very Whatever. interesting because think about it. They don't have a lot of games out there that are PvP where you're in swords and shields and stuff and bone arrows. I mean, it's because it's like so limiting though. No, it is. But it's very it's very yeah. interesting because it's like I guess they have to like – you unless it's like actually VR like you said, it'd be really hard to get the hitboxes down. Mm-hmm. Like it had to be so precise. Yeah. That would be really cool though actually. Like maybe that could be the next big thing. Like some sort of like PvP – medieval game that's like really good Mm -hmm. like that would be really interesting though yeah but it just it's so limiting like you really you're right it's like you swing your sword at this area they they press block they block it but it's like i don't know that would be so cool if they could do that somehow Mm -hmm. i don't know how they would do it but i like to speak as they is like there's like a developer out there like i don't even know what developer this is yeah you know those guys (laughs) you know those guys yeah That's, that's actually the developer name those guys (laughs) <laughs> those are, that could be our developing name yeah we're not gonna make the game we don't know anything about making games what are you talking about i do it as a side job yeah okay no i'm just kidding um, um yeah that's that's really interesting though what were we talking about though before chivalry though because i feel like we were we were talking about something and i had something else to tell you um before you, you were lagged out oh, sorry. oh oh you were saying that's something you'd want to see as a vr game yeah. so what i would and i think this is like i think you would agree with this but like dude I think every kid or every person our age would love to see a Pokemon VR game. Yeah. Like, yeah. like where you're in the Pokemon world. I remember when I was a kid, I used to like want to be in the world of what, Pokemon. What like, I want, it doesn't even have to be VR. I just want a Pokemon game where the battle is like real time and it's like the show. Oh, yeah. So, where they like dodge. Yeah. And like stuff, you would like, like tell you them, say, like, dodge. dodge it or whatever. All right. Now we use Thundershock or whatever. You know, like that would be freaking awesome. Um, instead of just like, Okay, let me click Thunderbolt. All right, let me wait for them to lock in their move. Okay. All right, cool. cool. I'm going first. Okay, now they're going first. 
Okay, it's my turn again. Okay, cool. <laughs> like, yeah. What if what if Nintendo has actually done this because they're already thirty years in the future, like we talked about last time? <laughs> yeah. and they've like they've actually made this game, but they're just toying with us. They they with need all to these do, IVs and there EVs. needs to be a couple of things made in VR. Um, and one of these has actually been made in AR, which is augmented reality, like Pokemon Go. But I think VR would be, would be better for the experience. Okay. Um, Pokemon, like you said, I think a real time one though would be better than turn based. Um, or even like if it was like VR, but like you control the Pokemon sort of, um, I don't know. I think it would be hard to program voice commands for the Pokemon. Yeah, um, no, I agree. But yeah, uh, the second one though is Yu-Gi-Oh! And that's the one that's done AR. Yes. Oh, they've do- they've, Wait, that's on AR? They've done AR at tournaments. So like people on like the TVs can like see or like that's yeah cool. people in the audience can look look up at the TVs and like they'll summon like blue eyes white dragon and like they actually like appear on like the TV obviously not really that's life, really yeah. cool so that's pretty cool mm-hmm. i think that in vr would be pretty cool cuz then it's like oh my god i'm living the dream <laughs> i know i'm living the dream I of my the, dual disc that i bought when i was a kid i'm the king of games <laughs> you know <laughs> no you're not yugi boy <laughs> yeah like i swear it's just like oh that's amazing i would i would love that Dude, okay, side note. Okay. No, Sorry, go on. ahead. No, go ahead. Imagine, okay, imagine VR Yu Gi Oh with live voice chat. That would oh be gosh. amazing. You could, Our friend you Sean could, would just <laughs> trash talk someone so much. I would literally play every game like it's the TV show. <laughs> oh, look, now I play Pots exactly. of Green. You know what this does? Like, you literally ask someone. I would every literally time explain every card. I, I play. Dude, you get the judge called on you like every match. You'd be like, this guy just keeps over explaining every card. Do you judge. know what this card does? Yeah. Please, like, I activate you Monster every- Reborn. It's like, oh boy, I'll never, I don't know what that does. Well, let me explain it. I was being sarcastic. <laughs> this lets oh me bring gosh. back a monster from my graveyard. Really, I had no idea. Like literally, if you just, if you did that, I would want you to put oh the seal of Warrior in your deck. <laughs> And I would want you to the put great like, <laughs> the great Leviathan. Yo got you okay. I know some of you listeners probably have not watched Yu Gi Oh. You might have, depending on your demographic, like age, like range or whatever. But like, um, yeah, because I don't know which demographic we're really speaking to here. If we're speaking to like fifteen year olds, twenty something year olds, you know what I'm <laughs> saying? So, but if you haven't you really need to watch Yu-Gi-Oh Bridge series on oh YouTube gosh, it so is funny. absolutely amazing and the show in general like we loved the show when we were you know younger but it was very cheesy but like and a bridge uh, points be, out all the flaws which makes it so funny yeah it's really really funny um but yeah that would be that would be so amazing if they made an, an AR <laughs> Like a like a, they cross did that, but I have to say, F Yu Gi Oh Duels of the Roses, the game on what? PS2. I love that game, dude. So no, I really liked the animations in that game, but dude, I swear <laughs> in that game there was different rules. Yeah, like it's because it wasn't like standard Yu Gi Oh. It was like yeah, it Yu-Gi-Oh confused chess. me though. I didn't understand. It was what it was like Yu Gi Oh chess. You had to move your cards around like different tiles and stuff, and each tile was um, like a different uh, environment. So like depending on the card, it would either get like a buff or a debuff from the tile. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, because yeah, I remember that and they had like the they had like the terrain bonuses. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I see it for so frustrating because I remember I rented that game like four times from Blockbuster. And I gave it a different chance every time. I was like, all right, this time I'm going to do well. And I remember, like, fighting Rex Raptor, and I couldn't win <laughs> or Weevil. Because, like, he had, like, he had like 10 man-eater bugs, like, in his deck. And I was like, are yeah. you kidding me? And I remember he, like, polymer, he like uh, polymerizationed, like, random cards that didn't make <laughs> any sense. And it made, like, a 300 attack monster. I was like... I was like, what are you talking about? Like, this isn't even real. I was like, I call a judge. Like, judge. Like, <laughs> Yeah, that game was strange. Um, and I think, like, I think at one point I tried to use, like, Exodia or something. And, like, it didn't work for whatever reason. I don't know. Maybe Hacked. maybe I had to be, like, maybe I had to have them in, like, a certain order on the field or something. I don't know. But I like that game. It, it's just not, like, traditional Yu-Gi-Oh. I will say though, Sword Stalker is the most OP card in that whole game. <laughs> Why? That card is really Be- sick. Because though. like it's already like a strong card. It's like two thousand attack base, um, or something like that. But like, I think 
in hold on, let me look up what it actually does in the actual um, game and then let's see let's compare okay so it's just a normal monster in the actual game so it doesn't even have an effect but in <laughs> in freaking duelist of the roses it freaking like gained attack point like 300 attack points for like every like monster face up on your side of the field or something like that it was like what it was stupid that's so it dumb. was stupid broken <laughs> Wait, and you could, I don't think you had a cap on monsters in that game. Like I think you could put as many as you want on the tiles, like depending on if you had space. I could be wrong though. Well, I found the wiki for it. Yeah, and they had like a checkmate oh, system, yeah, right? Where like you you like checkmated like your a guardian or whatever. You had like a monster that was like your guardian. Of, yeah, um so okay, here it is. So in Duels of the Roses, it was an effect monster. When this card is flipped face up, it increases its uh, uh, it is increased by 100 points for each monster in your graveyard. So, like, I, I would just ridiculous. sacrifice monsters on purpose just to power up Swordstalker and then just, like, sweep with it. That's, yeah. That's so it annoying. Was o- it was <laughs> OP. It's like, oh, Blue Eyes White that's so funny. 11 monsters in my graveyard. <laughs> Flip over. <laughs> Dead. That's ridiculous. Yeah. And it's there are a lot of it's like oh it's it just says increased one hundred points so I think that was attack and defense. Jeez, yeah, they were actually I really liked uh, Legacy of the Duelist, the game on PS4 that we played. Oh yeah, that game was fun. We need to do that again. Yeah, that game's fun, man. Um, I remember you were like grinding for like (laughs) certain decks, but there's been a lot of good Yu-Gi-Oh games that have come out like video games I've really actually enjoyed. I do remember Duels of the Roses had really good music. Yeah, um, I do remember that. Um, and everyone looked like really anime, even though it was already an anime, but they looked so an- – I remember like, Yugi looked like edgy. I was like, this is interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's that's interesting. So to transition here, I want to ask you – so we did this last week. So you we've been playing destiny obviously like we've been addicted to destiny uh we weren't able to do the raid yet we're hoping to do the raid though in the next couple of days i would i would hope um with with foof but we we were planning to do the raid as soon as possible because we're ready to do it um but festival of the lost does come out if you guys do play destiny it comes out this week oh, yeah. and it's gonna be really cool um and we're pumped about that because joe really likes wearing the masks always and and so we're really pumped about that but Joe, so what was the coolest thing that you did in a game this week or fail? Mm, so obviously Destiny. Probably one of my Crucible games. Okay, so what? I don't know. What happened? I don't know. I don't remember. I hate you. They all kind of blend together after a while. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, the one that I remember is when we were playing and we came back. So I have two things. One, <laughs> one involves, one involves a grenade again. Oh boy. Um, but the, the first one is when we were down, me and Joe were down like probably like 70 points in control to, to this one. Oh team. yeah. That was a good one. And we were trying to figure out what was going on. Like we could not get out of our spawn. It was the, and, and the map, yeah, the map was like really bad. I don't remember the map name. It, it was the, name? it was the one like Earth map that you play control on. Um, Destiny Two, Crucible Earth maps. <clears throat> it's in the EDZ. Legion's Gulch. Legion's Gulch. Yep. So that one, and if you guys have played Destiny Two, but so we were, we were in that map. We were like spawn trapped, but I was just like getting so many kills. It was ridiculous. And then the spawns got flipped. We capped like two of the flags and we spawn trapped them and they literally oh, could not get no, out the rest of the game it's not legion's gulch hold on it's not is it dead cliffs it might be dead cliffs let's see or is it fortress i want to say it's f- dead cliffs okay mm-hmm. well either way i don't know Either way, we spawn trapped this team again, and they literally didn't get out of the map the whole oh, the yeah, whole the whole rest of the dead game. Cliffs. Dead cliffs. Dead cliffs. Okay. Yep. Um, the whole rest of the game, and we I ended up getting forty two kills, and we ended up winning by like six points. It was ridiculous. Yeah. I I don't know. It was kind of yeah. Crazy. So pro tip: if you guys are ever playing control on the Dead Cliffs map, which is on the on Earth EDZ, uh, 
don't cap A. I mean, you can cap A if you spawn on there, but then you want to cap C and hold that side because the A. You want to get away from yeah, A as soon as possible. You don't want to spawn on A side. You want to spawn on C side. So. Uh, that reminds me of Call of Duty when people yeah. would spawn trap you. I will say I I kind of sort of remember one thing that that was funny that happened this week. Um, okay. It didn't happen to me. It happened more to you. But uh, we were finishing oh, up like Lord. the nightfall or something, and <laughs> we kept trying to go to the tower individually. We weren't as a fire team either. It was like individually, and we kept trying to go to the tower. I would get kicked out of orbit or kicked out of loading to the tower and kicked back to orbit, oh, and then Adam will get kicked back to orbit. And then I got kicked back. I finally made it after like two attempts. But Adam like literally had to load in like four or five times to finally get to the tower in Destiny. So I thought that was funny. Yeah. Rip our nat type, which is going to be fixed soon, yeah, it is. by the way. Monday. Gosh, that was so bad. No, I do remember that. So I actually have two more things I remember that were kind of cool. <laughs> Just recaps. One, remember that Gambit match that we came back and we like we like clutched. Like I like clutched their whole team and we like ended up winning. Remember that? Kind of. Or do you not remember that? Sore. Sure. Yeah. So there was that. But the other thing that was <laughs> that had to do with a grenade um, – Joe's a huge help right now, guys. No, but um, that I so Joe. Okay, my <laughs> grenades aren't ever that great, but there is sometimes where Joe gets in the way of my grenades. It's on purpose, though. And I know it's not on purpose, <laughs> but it seems like it's on purpose for the amount of times that this happens. <laughs> but <laughs> literally, we're doing a strike, or we're doing the nightfall, and we're oh. doing the first run where we tried to get 100k points. Let's not talk about that, but um. We tried to get 100k points in the Pyramidium Strike, mm -hmm. and we were doing Match Game, Extinguish, and Blackout, <laughs> which Match Game means all their shields, you have to use a certain elemental type to bring them down. You have to use the matching the elemental part. type to the shield. Right. Extinguish means if, if our both of us die in a restricted zone, we go to orbit, and so like the old night falls. And then um, Blackout, Blackout is, is um, no, no, no radar. radar, and they do more melee damage. Yeah, exactly. So we were playing that, and we were doing pretty good. And we got to a part in the like middle way through the strike, and I throw my solar grenade. Of course, I see this big fat titan just <laughs> running in front of my screen, aka muscular. Joe, aka Joe the Joe. Oh yeah, and it was and solar burn by the way. So solar damage does solar more burn. damage. Exactly. So I have a perfect grenade. I don't throw many perfect grenades. It's 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 literally never never the case i throw it hits off this dude's dome <laughs> literally hits off his dome i'm like and my grenade is not charging that quickly luckily though apparently if you throw it i didn't know this but i if you throw it off the ground so the way grenades work and they're timed in the game is if you throw it on the ground it will start the timer immediately for it to explode but if you throw it off a fire team member apparently that doesn't start the timer for the grenade to explode because I threw it off his head. It went straight in the air, landed in the middle of like three enemies, and it waited for like five seconds to blow up. And I was like, because I thought when it hit off your head, Joe, that it was mm -hmm. going to explode in the air and I was going to just waste <laughs> the grenade, but it actually fell in between all the enemies and it blew them up. It was amazing. But like, I don't know. That was kind of, that was kind of crazy nice. to me. That actually does remind me of like, a story that happened to me. So I'll, I'll end this segment with this. Um, so I've been on that crucible grind lately and I've been, I don't like Titans in the crucible. Like I like their charges and stuff, Interesting. Uh, but I feel like their supers are just weak um, compared to everything else. Um, Typical Titan, but um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was running Sentinel Titan, which is the void one. And I was like, all right, dude, there's like four people here. I'm about to pop off. So I, ho I go to press the two buttons you need to use super and I accidentally press my grenade first. I'm like, all right, fine, whatever. Throw my grenade. Uh, and then I pop my super. No big deal. Uh, turns out uh, I got hit by my own grenade and it was a suppression grenade. So I freaking throw the grenade on accident, pop my super Maybe. on purpose. And then I kill like one dude. I, I get like one attack off. And then my own grenade suppresses my super and I'm out of my super and I die. <laughs> yeah. And I've, I've <laughs> since then, I've suppressed myself at least three more times. Not like in my super, but like just like in general. Interesting. And I, it's really tilting me. So it's really tilting yeah. you. That's amazing, dude. Yeah. I was, oh I was my. not happy. 
that's that's pretty amazing uh great times in the destinies with with joe the joe 99 or actually just joe the joe yeah um so i was gonna probably end the podcast with a with two with two (laughs) metacritic reviews for you okay if that's fine because i feel like we have to end it on a better note than we started because (laughs) i did such a bad job that's a great note to start on it is a great note, technically, but I kind of want. I kind of. I can do one. It doesn't really matter. It's like, do you want to do one Just or do, do one. you want to do two? Okay, we'll do one. So, I want to find one for you. <sighs> and again, Gosh, right. uh, for anyone listening, uh, if you just want to leave a comment with a Metacritic review in the comment, that'd be cool. We can maybe use that for a future one. So, don't put the game title. I guess I don't. I don't know how that would work. Yeah, I guess just don't put the game title in it. And then we'll just... Don't put the game title. Yeah, don't put the game title, obviously. And then it's like, how would, um, how would we know what it is? <laughs> We'd have to, like, Google it or something. <laughs> interesting. Know. Okay, so I really want to do this one, but I just... I think you're going to get it, but I'm really... Remind me to tell you, like, I'm going to comment on this after we do this about this game. They got a really interesting user review, okay. which I think is kind of okay. kind of interesting. Um, also guys and girls, if you want to leave us any sort of like, if you guys ha- want to tell us about the, like any crazy stuff that happened in your week this week in gaming, any sort of, um, VR game that you guys really liked playing any um, feedback at all, really? Yeah. Any feedback at all. If you guys want to just tell us some things that you liked or didn't like, but mainly just if you guys want to comment on some of the things that we were talking about always leave a comment we'll talk about them and we'll highlight them in the next episode because we're interested because we, we're not very i don't think very experienced in vr or anything like that and we just kind of i think it's just interesting <laughs> topics but yeah okay hit me with this so review. okay oh, gosh this is hard okay just we're gonna go we're gonna go with uh Wait, oh, this is, oh my gosh, what? Okay. All right. Yes. Okay. We're going to do Here this. We go. Okay. This is great. Okay. Meta, meta score of 79, mm-hmm. user score of 3.2. <laughs> okay. 760 ratings. All right. Okay. This is a, uh, so I'm going to read the summary. I don't know if I can give you much more information because you might get it if I do, but mm-hmm. okay. It starts off with, declare your allegiance. And then it says, blank paid a terrible price to end the apocalyptic march of the blank crusade. But even as the world's wounds are tended, it is the shattered trust between the blank and the blank that may prove the hardest to mend. As this age-old conflict reignites, join your allies and champion your factions because blank's future will be forged in the fires of war. Um, then it says there's, there's like a bunch of different, like, gosh, this is the longest <laughs> summary of a game review I've ever seen in my life. Can you give me the um, genre? Yeah. <laughs> or uh, give it it's away? multi, it's multiplayer. Let's just say is that. Is it an MMORPG? It's all multiplayer. <laughs> what? Is it an MMORPG? One could say that, but the rating is T for... Timmy? No. T for Timmy. T for, t- <laughs> t for teen. Um, so that might help too, but I cannot give you the developer, and I, I could say, more or less, it's an MMO. It, more or is less. Is it World of Warcraft? Son of a nutcracker! <laughs> God, you're good at this. Is it what Battle for Azeroth? <laughs> it is. It's Battle for Azeroth. Really? Wow! Really, that guy was really that good. Got a this three game. point whatever as a user score. User score, yeah. That's, that's surprising. Why I'm like blown away because I've heard like nothing but good things about that. I don't really. That's gotta be like. That's gotta be like people that are just salty about. Yeah, something. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, because literally, dude, there's like nine paragraphs of summary. <laughs> it's like declare your allegiance, recruit allied races, Cole Tiaras, Zandalar, plunder uncharted islands, storm the war, like so much stuff. But yeah, the other thing I was saying too 
was I was going to do Destiny 2 Forsaken, <laughs> um, but I didn't think – I felt like you were going to get it really easily. Dude, <laughs> it got a – let's see. It got uh, – blah, 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 blah. Where's that? Where's that? Where's that? There it is. So it got a 86 on Metacritic. Mm-hmm. It got a 5.9 user. Interesting. Which I don't get either. But this one only has 46 ratings for that. Right. But World of Warcraft had 700, and it got a 3.2. So I don't really yeah, I don't know. get that. But, yeah. So, dang, Joe. Like, why are you so good at this? This sucks, freaking, man. I mean, the, the, I'm straight the description gave it away. <laughs> I mean, kind of. But I tried to pick one that, like, I, I feel like I did pretty good with it. I don't know. <laughs> I just oh I just gosh. observe things around me like my coworkers play uh, WoW and they like every day they come in and talk about like oh what's your character at and you know like what level is he and all this and that and I just like hear things like that I'm like okay and then like I ask them about like Battle of Azeroth like why it's like so hype and all that so and they're like oh yeah it's Let's- like this reigniting <laughs> of like a war and blah 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 and I'm like okay and then you said like oh this age old like fight or whatever and I'm like. Battle for Azeroth. If I wouldn't have said it was an MMO, would that have given it away? No, I still would have guessed uh, Warcraft anyways. Gosh, dang it. <laughs> i got to get better at this. <laughs> Man, I'm just better. Okay, wait. i got to read you this review. Use <laughs> review for Destiny. Hold on a second. This is a zero by Skinny Skittles. What? On September, <laughs> September 25th, 2018. This is the reason why gaming is being ruined nowadays. So Destiny 2 launched as some of the biggest crap ever made in video game history. I bought it at launch and sold it away within four days. So let me explain what was so wrong with that game and what is wrong with this game. So Destiny 2 is supposed to be a massive revolution and was supposed to have an excellent story. The developer said something like, but not exactly. There will be so much story in Destiny 2, you will go crazy. Absolutely true, Bungie. The game had so much crap story, (laughs) it'll make you go crazy. On top of that, the microtransaction system was made to make you spend money. At this point, I have pretty much no choice but to accept these crap systems, even though I would rather not because fanboys would not let people who spoke out against the game. Not only that, the gameplay it was so easy. Like seriously, you can you can beat it so easily. <laughs> I know at this point wait it says I know at this point I might as well go into the main game, talk some of this crap on it, but I doubt anyone looks at this game anymore. This is the new crap that everyone is talking about. I was hearing so many good things about this expansion, so I decided to buy it. Thank God I didn't buy the other expansions and oh my gosh. Or he goes, and OMG at first, I thought they actually fixed this game, but I realized what they did later was was so disappointed. They did what they did in Destiny 1, which they improved the game through the Taken King, but it was too late and it cost money, not free of DLC. This is what makes me realize that this game is complete cash grab, and please, if you love video games or ever, don't buy Destiny 2's expansion or any other expansion. This is the review of an old-timer that wants games to be great again. <laughs> what? Too late, I already bought it. Zero of two users found this, found this helpful. <laughs> Okay, I want to read you one more review to end on. Okay. <laughs> this oh, is gosh. The- <laughs> so you know of this. You've heard of this before. It's probably on Nintendo, right? Because it's like no, a it's the not. theme here. It's, well, okay. the game was released on the, the Nintendo DS, but the developer is not Nintendo. Okay. Okay. All right. So Metacritic score of 75, user score of 8.2. It is a role-playing and an action RPG game. And for some reason, they have action RPG twice. Um, okay, okay. So the double action RPG. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the summary is, Blank revolves around Roxas, the other hero from Blank. Players follow Roxas through his days among Organization 13's ranks, unraveling the events that took place during the year that Sora was asleep, and ultimately revealing one of the bl- one of Blank's Wait, one of the Blank Saga's most shocking secrets. Players and their friends join Roxas and his friend Axel and their mysterious 14th member of Organization 13 <laughs> on a journey across charming, vibrant worlds of Blank and Blank's beloved characters. Oh my gosh, why do I not know this? I this is so sad I feel like, okay i'm gonna get you like, do know what you should i know be able to be i feel like i know like i should know this but i'm just so bad so i'm gonna give like 17 guesses okay give you like one I'll guess four. okay first guess is um a final fantasy game no. okay second guess is uh, the freaking one that's um 
Oh my gosh. Um, what is it called? The oh, hold on a second. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Um, it's um, it has Ike in them in it from from Super Smash Bros. Fire Brothers. Emblem. Uh, yeah, Fire Emblem. Nope. Gosh, am I close at all? Uh, no, <laughs> not with that. It, is is it like cartoony or is it like? It's it's developed in Japan. If that helps, you can't tell me the developer. Uh, the developer is Hand Ink. Hand ink. It's, yeah, I don't know. Uh, like H period A period N period D period ink. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, it's not Final Fantasy. It's not Fire Emblem. Um, it's in that. It's in. It's the same style as those. Like they look like sort of realistic, but it's still like cartoony, you know. Okay. Um, oh my gosh. You said I should know this. Why should I know You've this? You've heard of the game before that and i would say you've heard of it recently recently yeah. the game isn't the game isn't recent but you've heard of it recently i probably said it in this podcast didn't i <laughs> who knows i hate you um oh my gosh uh golden sun no <laughs> gosh what did i say earlier i have a terrible <laughs> I'll memory give you one more guess um oh my gosh what did i guess before um i said terraria dig dug Mm -hmm. um (laughs) monster hunter uh oh my gosh oh i this is this sucks i'm so bad at this uh give me one more hint something like Uh, give me something let's see Let's see if there's like a user review I can take <clears throat> or something. Uh, no, that's more. That's too spoilery. Um, gosh, what the heck? How can I not like I I I feel like I said this I, earlier, I will, but I, don't I will know. say that this is. A game that bridges the gap between two other games, like two sequels, or like so. Like there's like genres. the first game, then there's this game, and then there's like the second game. If that makes sense. Interesting. So it's like a one point five, something like that. <sighs> My gosh. Uh, Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Do you know which? Yes! Do you know which one specifically though? Is this like Kingdom Hearts Pi? <laughs> <laughs> you mean the one with all the numbers? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Kingdom Hearts three five right. eight over two days. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I can't believe I got that right. Oh my god. When you said Final Fantasy, I was like, crap. He's gonna say Kingdom Hearts next, but no. <laughs> Oh, I how did I not think of that? And okay. it was mentioned recently, dude. Last podcast. <laughs> yeah, no, that is you're right. Well, guys, if you guys know anyone else that's <sighs> as bad as the, at this game as I am, please put their name in the comments, and we'll send them a post letter a post or a letter. postcard, a post letter, a postcard. Um, but yeah, I'm really bad at this, but I think that'll be the end of the podcast for this episode, guys. Um, the things I will say is, like I said. If you guys want to ever watch us play video games, the video games, uh, Joe streams Monday, Wednesday, Friday at Joe the Joe 99. Uh, so twitch.tv slash Joe the Joe 99. And I stream on Monday and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash bra. We got this. And make sure to come watch us play if you want. Um, and leave some comments if you guys want to hear or if you guys want to you know interact with us at all we'll read some of them we'll we'll read y'all's reviews we'll try to guess i won't get any right because i suck um but yeah just uh we appreciate you guys watching the last one but joe what do you anything any final parting words for the beautiful audience um not really i mean there's uh, about like six other kingdom hearts games that i'm gonna review for adam next time <laughs> so we'll see oh if we can gosh. get this <laughs> Uh, but no, um, 
But yeah, thank you guys for tuning in this week. Uh, we'll see you guys next week or maybe in our streams. Um, but until then, have faith, be great, and we'll see you guys later. Lagged out. Lagged out. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs>